What's going on, family? This is your backyard gardener. I am in my garden today, and I just, it really um, kind of hit me a little bit, and I just wanted to talk to you about um, this so-called green thumb. Um, we all know that that's a myth about having a green thumb. I got um, a message um, and someone was like, I wish I could grow like you grow. You have such a green thumb. I get messages that say things like, I just don't have room to grow. I live in an apartment. <clears throat> it's excuses. Excuses, excuses, excuses. On this platform, we have people who are indoor growers outdoor growers, hydroponics, aeroponics, whatever type of grower it is. You don't always have to have a whole lot of space to grow. You have to make do with what you have because if you really have a passion or a desire to learn gardening or to learn how to grow your own food, you will make a way. Um, if you have a neighborhood um, like I do where they tear down houses and the lots are available for sale through your county that's one way uh, well how do you get your water rain barrel catchment system the water comes into that and I use that rain water to water my garden oh it just seemed like so much work uh -huh, I don't want to do all that work well you don't want to grow if you don't want to do work because gardening is work gardening is a lot of work gardening is about um patience as well i'm looking at my camera man because it keep wiggling the camera gardening is about um patience as well so we have to have patience we just can't put the seed in there and not do anything to it <laughs> that's just like having a kid you can't just say, okay, I've had this baby. You have to nourish that baby. You have to train that baby. You have to teach that baby. You have to take care of that baby. And it's the same thing with your garden. These are like babies. You have to take care of them until they can take care of themselves. My backyard orchard I put in two years ago. <clears throat> it is now getting to the point where it could take care of itself. I still do trimming on trees, but as it's going to get to a point where I don't even have to go back there and trim the trees as much as I used to, or do my soil drenches as much as I used to. A lot of people say, well, how did your trees get so big so fast? Because I, I, my trees are still small. You have to go into the videos and watch the videos where I learned from Organics Best how to elevate my trees, put them in a the box, do my soil drenches. I tried it, and it actually worked. My trees are huge now back here. Um, and it happened within two years. There's no smoke and mirrors. You guys were with me on this journey of turning that alley into an orchard. Um, and now it has developed and mature. I'm getting fruit off my trees. <clears throat> I'm getting... Um, pears off my trees for the first time and I'm going to show it but there's no such thing as a green thumb it's just about gaining the knowledge and having a desire and having patience to do it if you really want to grow um, uh, fruits and vegetables you very well can even if you live in an apartment I told you about the culinary apples which are um, from eight feet tall but two feet wide. Those are great for a patio um, to sit on the patio. I told you about the patio peaches, uh, top hat blueberries. Those are all things that you can grow on your patio. Uh, it doesn't take a lot if you're just a family of one, just yourself. Um, then that tree will be more than enough for you to enjoy um, fruits from. The same thing with figs. I hear this is another excuse that I hear. You can't grow figs in Michigan. <clears throat> oh, you got the, the, the perfect weather to grow citrus. That's why you get citrus. I have citrus. I got about seven citrus trees I haven't even showed on my channel yet. Um, 
and they're growing. I have grapefruits, I have oranges, and I also have lemons and limes. And they're actually producing fruit, and I will show those things to you later. And I live in Michigan. Yeah, I got to do things different from people that lives in Florida or people that lives in California to grow my things because I have to bring them in the house. The same thing with my figs. I enjoy my figs. They're not for my climate, but I grow them and I bring them in. Well, that's too much work. I can agree it can be kind of work because right now I'm in the process of downsizing my collection. But I'm still going to be growing my figs. I'm going to keep about four of my trees. And the rest of them I'm either going to sell or give away. So let me take you real quick and show you a few things that I have going on in the garden. Things that you think that you can't grow. And you can. I don't have a backyard. I only got a front porch. Put them on the front porch. I got plants on my front porch right now. So I'm going to turn this camera around. And I'm going to show you what I got. All right. A prime example is these are fig trees. I've been growing figs for a number of years now. This is my collection of figs. They're different figs. Some of them are rare. Some of them aren't. Um, but if you have, if your porch is this size, as you can see right here, I have them on little risers. Let's say your porch is about this wide. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plants right there that you could put on your back porch. One plant or two plants that you could put on your patio. Look at this tree. Straight up and down. That doesn't take up a whole bunch of real estate on your porch. So you can grow a fig tree or a fig plant on your very balcony apartment or your small porch or small yard. You might not be able to grow in raised beds like I am here. These are all raised beds. I got my uh, squash. I have my cucumbers, sweet potatoes, uh, strawberries, but that doesn't mean that you can't grow these things because if you come over here in these containers, everything that I pretty much showed you over there, I have over here, right in these containers, squash, peppers, Tomatoes, other tomatoes, <clears throat> even raspberries in a pot, more pep bell peppers in a pot. See all these pots right here? Before I was growing in the ground or in raised beds, my channel was about container growing. I've stopped some of my container growing, but I still grow in containers for the simple fact it's convenient for me. The peppers are doing wonderful right in a container. The tomatoes, the squash, the, the um, eggplant right in a container. You could grow eggplant in the container? Absolutely. You can grow squash. Straight neck or crooked neck. Squash right in a container. You can grow raspberries right in a container. Anything. Blueberries. Look. In a container. Those are blueberry plants. Y'all know these containers. Basic uh, Walmart, Home Depot, wherever. Look at the clusters of blueberries. Look at them. We're in Michigan now. 6B. Blueberries is coming in. Over here. Some more. I just got these blueberries last year. Blueberries. Blueberries. 
blueberries. Here's another pot. Tomato. Right here. Two eggplants. I want to grow some trees. There's a pot. Here's a tree. Here are the peaches. Would that fit on your patio? Ask yourself. Look at all these peaches. Look at all these. These, these are my grandboy's trees that they bought from Tractor Supply last year. It, when I tell you, and some of y'all in Boston Tractor Supply trees, they ain't nothing but the little whips in the bag for $13. Look how thick it's gotten. Over one season, not even a year, just one season. It went through the winter. And look at all the peaches. Well, they say that your trees don't bear fruit for three to four years. Um, <clears throat> some of them. I'm sure this tree is not a four-year-old tree. Look how skinny that is. Will I be thinning out the fruit? Absolutely. The fruit is probably going to, some of them going to thin itself out and drop. Then I got my tree over here, my red haven. That's a red haven I just showed you. This is a, another red haven. <clears throat> Look at all the fruit. See all that fruit up in there? All through there is peaches. It's peaches. Y'all remember when I had put this alley, in, uh, made this orchard into an alley? Right here. Asian pear tree. The pollinator that I had bought <coughs> for over here. Now we're kind of cold right now here in Michigan. But look. Pears. Asian pears. Look. Asian pears. They're coming in. Remember those beautiful white blooms that I showed you? All up there. Pears. Up there. Pears. Over here. Pears. The tree is loaded. The bees been doing their thing for me. I did a split because my colony had got too big and they were, one just went in with Cheeto legs. My colony had gotten so big, guys, that they started to swarm on me. There wasn't no more room. They were uncomfortable. I was at a point with these bees where I didn't know what to do. I'm learning as I go. I did my split. They still swarmed. I put them in the new box. See how they coming in with that pollen on their legs? Watch. <clears throat> I put them in the new box. Couple of frames. I had to even do one over here. Yep, they're in there too. You can see their little legs wiggling. I had to do two splits. I got my honey box up here ready. Look, watch their little back legs. They're bringing in honey. They're bringing in pollen. But look, fruit, Asian pears. Loaded. Why are they loaded? Because those bees were doing that thing. I'm scared of bees. I can't do the bees. I'm scared of bees too. I done got stung about five times. I ain't going to lie and tell you, you're not going to get stung. Because you're going to get stung. And it hurt. Then it itches. Then it swells. But you get back into it. Apple tree. Apples. 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 First time I sent a Rosa. This tree is a dwarf. It's busting out its girdle at the bottom. It's busting out. It's busting the seam. Look. Plums. All over the tree. Plums. These are the reasons 
why you grow? Well, I don't have this type of space. I just showed you. Plums. I showed you that tree down there with fruit on it that was in that pot. Plums. All over the tree. I'm excited because this is my first year having the plums. And if I would have followed a few techniques, I would have had them sooner than that. Because as soon as I put that tree in the ground, it took off. Here's my persimmon tree. Persimmons don't grow well here. I have to put this tree in my greenhouse. I have to figure out a technique on how I can get this persimmon tree to start pushing fruit with just a little dieback. A little dieback. Guys, don't sit on the sideline and watch us gardeners on YouTube show you all their fruits. And then you get upset and be like, man, I, I, I wish I had room. You do. I could take you in my house and I could show you my grapefruit tree. It's in the house. It grows in the house. I don't even bring it outside. My orange tree. I don't bring it outside. I got a few of them on the porch that I'm downsizing and giving away. But I'm keeping three of my trees. Four. I'm keeping my lemon. I'm keeping my grapefruit. Keeping my orange. And I'm keeping my lime. So we have to make room to grow. If you don't have a green thumb and if you notice mine is not green either actually I haven't seen anybody with a green thumb on YouTube my whole point is we have to stop making excuses that I don't have a green thumb everything I touched it dies you're cursing yourself just figure out take a class I always take classes I don't, you know, it, that's just because I'm geeky like that. I like to to study and do little things, especially as I get older. I took a bee class. I didn't learn beekeeping from YouTube. I learned it from my class and from my mentor. And I'm still learning. And I learned about the thing that's about beekeeping and gardening. Everybody do it different. Last year I said... Berry tone was a good thing to have. And it did good. It don't get me wrong. But this year I discovered EB stone, fruit, and vine and berry fertilizer. Organic. EB stone has did wonders. So every year you're learning something different is my point. And it takes you to a different level. If you're just starting a garden, then start off with things simple to grow, like your brassicas. If you want to stay motivated in gardening, then start putting perennials out there. Things that's going to come back every year, like your blueberries. That's going to motivate you because you will always have a garden out there as long as you have things that's growing. So, this is your backyard gardener. I just wanted to do this video and I just wanted to show you that we have to stop making excuses on why we don't grow. Get off the sideline. Well, backyard garden, I got a bad back. Guess what? I do too. And everywhere you go, and you go notice in my videos, I always had this chair. Because I sit down. Does that make me a lazy gardener? <laughs> nope. It's just sometimes I sit down and I take a break. And that's why I went into my raised beds and containers in the first place. Because of my bad back from working in a factory. I even got stuff over here. Pepper plants. Eggplants. All my little almond milk jugs full of water. That's what you got to do to water. 
or you can get a spigot running underground like I did. I've showed you that. There's a lot of great gardeners on this platform. But you got to get off the sideline and stop watching the gardeners grow every year and become a gardener. You got to put it on YouTube. It's my watermelon that we did last week. Here's some onions. They're starting to come up already. You got to stop sitting on the sidelines. Are you going to kill things? Probably. Are things going to die? Sure. I am a master gardener, and I'm still killing stuff. <laughs> that, just because I got the paperwork say I'm a master gardener don't mean I'm a perfect gardener, and don't mean I'm going to make, uh, I'm not going to make mistakes, because I do. But that's okay. It's nothing that's going to stop me from continuing to grow. We can't depend on the grocery stores to always feed us now. And that sounds so strange to say that. We can't depend on the grocery stores. Uh, five years ago, would that ever came out your mouth? No. A lot of people don't grow. Oh, I'd rather go down to the Walmart and get... Look what's happening. The shelves is getting empty. All those um, uh, freights that was caught up on the harbor that they finally got on loose, they're just bringing that food off of there. Some of it they're still able to sell. That thing been caught up for almost a year. Is that what you want? Every time I turn on my phone, there's some type of notification of farmers had to kill 22,000 um, cows because of this. The chicken... Uh, bird flu is around. The chickens is dying. Farmers had to euthanize all their chickens. Farmers had to, to take down all their, burn all their crops. Come on now. Everything ain't just, come on. There's an agenda. And I'm not going to get caught up in your agenda. Because I'm going to grow my own food. And I, I don't have chickens. I don't have um, fish. I know some people that's raising their own fish, um, which is great. That's raising their own chickens, which is wonderful. Pigs, cows. De <laughs> You're not dependent on the system to feed us. You're depending on yourself. Get your babies out there to help garden with you. I didn't want this video to be this long, but I'm going to tell you this one last thing. I went to Home Depot last week to uh, get me some mulch to go in my front yard um, <coughs> garden area, flower garden area. And there was a lady in line, and she said, I asked my grandson to go and see how much this particular flower plant was. And she turned around, she's like, I think that is so awesome that you could get your grandson to to come out here with you and garden. I said, oh, they're always in the garden with me. I can't get my son out of the TV long enough to do anything. He's always on that darn video game. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no, that's not his fault. That's your fault. That's your fault. It's a time for video games. It's a time for TV. It's a time for YouTube. It's a time to get out here and make things happen for yourself. And they need to learn how to grow their own food. One thing about it, I only had sons. I didn't have any daughters. I have four sons. And actually, they were adopted, four adopted sons. And now I have grandbabies and granddaughters. And I taught them how to grill, to garden, to clean to cook. My sons are great housekeepers. <laughs> great cooks. Grill masters. And they garden. For the most part. And now, this beekeeping journey, I'm taking my grandboys along with me on the beekeeping journey. This is something that was totally new to me. Stop watching. Start researching. 
and start and just do it. Don't even think too much into it. Just do it. So, so this is your backyard gardener saying, get out there and do it. And happy gardening, everybody.